Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. All of us should have an articulated philosophy, a clearly identified set of core beliefs. That's because it's foundational to figuring out the life we want to live. To offer you an example and maybe help motivate you, here is my list of philosophical core principles. First, regarding relationships. I believe that all consensual relationships and sex should be respected. Abortion should be legal on demand. The mother and father's right, except in anonymous sperm donation, should trump the fetal rights in determining when, if ever, to take on the huge time and financial cost of parenthood. I believe in parenting by conversation, never with corporal punishment. Corporal punishment teaches that violence is an acceptable response to dissatisfaction. We too quickly exert psychological or physical abuse on those that we claim to care about. Now let's turn to money. These are my core philosophical beliefs about money. Money, and especially materialism, causes more harm than good. A tiny percentage of people and big finance corporations control too large a percentage of world wealth. Some redistribution, merit-based, is required. Corporations need enforced regulation to keep them from polluting and marketing unworthy, even unsafe, products. Capitalism creates too many losers, and socialism creates too much laziness. Hence, a mixed economy is wise, a basic safety net, and lightly regulated capitalism. Now, um, my foundational beliefs about work and education, they intersect, so I'm putting those two together. People who work long hours should get more respect, certainly not be pathologized as workaholic, as though they were like an alcoholic. Individualism is underappreciated today. People mouth words like community, collaboration, and teamwork, but too often, when it's expedient, people take care of number one. That's why the communes, co-ops, and kibbutzim of the 60s have all but died. They talked collectivism, but too often refuse to clean the toilet. That's why in school and in the workplace, there's frequent disgruntlement about team projects, team members who don't pull their weight, knowing that someone else will do it, or student teams in which a bright student does most of the team's work, or sits bored listening to and having to give an equal share of the work and time to the lackluster. Most frustrating is when an individual's pay or course grade depends on the team's performance. The world is better when merit is strongly prioritized over race and gender in hiring, student selection in college and graduate school, and in what policymakers and the media choose to focus on. Effort to close the achievement gap will likely to continue to fail. We've already spent $22 trillion over the past half century. Google that. Google poverty, $22 trillion. You'll see it. And the gap is as wide as ever. Um, Google U.S. News and Achievement Gap, wide as ever, you'll find it. Anyway, efforts to close the achievement gap are likely to continue to fail until the educators talk with the biologists. Environment can only build on what genes provide. Even a perfectly tuned VW Bug will lose badly against a Porsche. Therefore, an intelligence quote-unquote pill is needed to close the achievement gap. As long as it's ethically dispensed, that is purely voluntary and available free to the poor as are most medical treatments through Medi-Cal and other such programs. That's why I, for example, fund the Society for Neuroscience's Nemco Family Prize for the best PhD dissertation on the biological basis of higher level reasoning. And finally, let's turn to recreation. At the risk of sounding like a spoil sport, um, mind-altering drugs such as weed and yes, alcohol should be illegal, even though I've used both. Because of the millions of lives they ruin, and I actually drink a glass of wine once or twice a week. But I'm, you know, it doesn't matter whether, you know, I have to stop using it. It seems to me that they should be made illegal because of the millions of lives they ruin. The lives of the abusers, the lives of their coworkers, their family, their friends, and the people they maimed or killed in vehicle accidents. The dangers of alcohol are well known, but marijuana is far more dangerous than activists would have us believe. In cognitive, social and emotional impairments, and increased cardiovascular risk, even in the young. For example, 
uh, and I have links to this in the, I've written this as an article, it'll be in Psychology Today, but there is a research review by 40 luminaries who are MDs and scientists um, that's I linked to in that article. Uh, and that review focused on marijuana's cognitive and emotional effects, but a separate review warns of increased cardiovascular and heart attack risk, plus a really recent review last month, uh, which talked about that, including in the very young. And added, uh, there is also a research review that I cite in that Psychology Today uh, version of this that finds increased lung disease. And making matters worse, marijuana use is increasing in jurisdictions in which it's been legalized, and I have a link to the research on that as well in the article. In response to the argument that prohibition didn't work, well, alcohol consumption dropped by two-thirds in prohibition's first years and by a third later. And when prohibition was lifted, alcohol consumption returned to the higher rate before prohibition. Okay, enough about me and my philosophy of life, my core beliefs. But now, do you want to say or write something about your core philosophy? I think you'd find it helpful. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemko. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. Always look forward to your comments. I would welcome your hitting the share button below and sharing on your social media and or subscribing to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemko.